In this demonstration we're going to look at moving mailboxes between forests. We may be doing this for a number of reasons. One of the reasons may be we're upgrading from a previous version of Exchange. Another reason may be that we're consolidating our organisation, so from multiple domains or forests. I have two forests. I have one called datum.com, the one I'm currently in, and I also have another one called TreeResearch.net. TreeResearch.net is running on a previous version of Exchange Server, and in the case of my datum.com, I am now running on the new version. So I'm going to want to move some mailboxes between the forests in order to allow me to upgrade or migrate to this newer system. First thing I need to do is I just need to set up some DNS records to allow my various servers and my various computers and my various forests to communicate with each other. I've come into the DNS manager on adatum.com and what I want to do at this point here is just create a conditional forwarder so we can resolve names to the computers in the treeresearch.net domain. So I just need to fill out some of the information within this wizard. So we're setting up the conditional forward for treeresearch.net. DNS server and treeresearch.net is 172.16.20.10. Doesn't really matter about this error message at this point here, just to explain why I'm getting this error message. It's just telling me I'm not authoritative for that zone, so I'm happy with that. I can select OK. Now we've done that, the next thing to do is to configure a trusted root CA in the target domain. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to come into File Explorer. I've connected through to the cert serve certain role folder on the tray-dc1 for treeresearch.net. I'm just going to copy that certificate. I'm then going to take that certificate and I'm going to paste that onto Windows System32. Then what we'll do is we'll just come into the Cert Serve folder, come into Certain Role, and all we're going to do is we're just going to paste the certificate in here. Now we've done that, the next thing we're going to do is just create a group policy to allow us to distribute that certificate, but also as well set that certificate up as a Trusted Root Certification Authority. So to do that, I'm going to come into Server Manager. I'm just going to come into my Tools, and I'm just going to go for my Group Policy Management. Within my Group Policy Management, we're just going to edit the default domain policy. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come into our Computer Settings. So we'll just expand this up a bit. We'll come into our Computer Settings, come into Policies. We're going to go for our Windows Settings. Within our Windows settings, we're then going to go for security settings. And within security settings, we're looking for the certification settings. So we'll come for our public key policies, we'll expand that up. We'll come to our trusted root certification authorities. And what we're going to do at this point here is import the certificate we've just copied across. So we're doing that for a machine. We just need to browse through to the certificate. So I can see colon, Windows, System32. And then within the System32 folder, we need to go to our cert serve folder and in our cert serve folder we'll then go to our certain role highlight the tray research certificate and select open happy with the settings here so we can select next we will place all the certificates in the following store trusted root certification authorities and select next read through the summary we're happy with everything in the summary and select finish this will now go away and import the certificate into our trusted root certification authorities as we can see, import was successful, so we can select OK, and there it is. So now what we'll do is we'll just move over to our Exchange server, because this is our target domain, or forest, so adatum.com, and we'll then just run the group policy update in order to force through that certificate. Now what we're going to do is we're going to run a GP update forward slash force, and what that will do is that will update the policy. So now we've forced through the policy, the next thing we need to do is enable the MRS proxy, MRS being Microsoft Replication Service proxy, and we're going to do that in the source domain, the source domain being Tray Research. So we're now going to move across to the Tray Research Exchange server. Now on the Tray Research Exchange server, so what we're going to do at this point here is we're just going to come down to the servers node, and in the servers node what we need to do is we then just need to come into our virtual directories, so we're going to do that by going to the virtual directories tab. And in the virtual directories tab, what we're looking for is the EWS default website. And what we need to do is then just edit that virtual directory. So here it is. We'll highlight the folder, select the edit button. And what we're going to do on the edit button is we're just going to come in here and we're just going to enable this. So we'll enable the MRS proxy endpoint. Now we've done that, we can save that off. And once that's saved off, 
Next thing we need to do is to actually prepare for the mailbox move. Just before we move across though, what we'll do is we will just test to ensure that the service is running. So we'll do that through our exchange management shell and we're going to do that by just issuing a test MRS health. What we'll do, just hit the enter key. And as we can see, everything's come back true. So we can see true, true, and then true and true. So we're happy with that. The next thing to do now is move over to our exchange server for the adatum.com forest, and then just prepare for that mailbox move. We're now on the lon-ex1 server. So the first thing we're going to do is just move into the scripts folder. So we'll do that by doing a CD, C colon programs, Microsoft Exchange Server version 15 scripts. Now we're in that folder, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to set up the local credential variable. So we're going to do that and what we're going to use at this point here is we're going to use the datum administrator user and what we're also going to do as well is just specify the password and select OK. Now we've done that, the next thing we'll do is we'll set up the remote credential variable. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to specify the Tray Research Administrator account, and we're also going to specify that password. The user that we want to move across is a user called Cindy, so what we'll do is we'll just issue the command lift to allow us to do that. So what we're doing at this point here is we're using a PowerShell script called prepare-move-request. Identity will be cindy at trayresearch.net. The remote forest domain controller is tray-dc1.trayresearch.net. The remote forest credential is the variable that we specify for remote, administrator. Local forest domain controller is lon-dc1.datum.com. The local forest credential is the local variable. And the target mail user, OU, will be OU equals IT datum.com. And what we're looking for here is we're looking for one mailbox ready to move. We'll just jump across to our Active Direct domain controller and just ensure that we do have a user account for Cindy White, and that should be a disabled account. Now what we've done here is we've come to the IT, and if we have a look, there's Cindy, and Cindy is indeed disabled. Now that we've got this, and now that we're fairly happy that the user account has been created, the next thing we need to do is we now need to move the mailbox. So what we'll do at this point here is we'll move back to the a datum exchange server and what we'll do is we'll go into the exchange control panel. We've now come into the exchange admin center. We've come to the recipients tab and on the recipients tab we're going to come to migration. Then on migration what we're going to do is we're going to do a new migration. So we'll select our plus button and what we're going to do is we're going to move to this forest. Then what we need to do is we need to add in who we're going to move to this forest. So what we'll do is we'll select our plus button. And what we're going to do is we're going to select Cindy White. And select Add. And select OK. Happy with all of that, so we can select our next button. It's asking us now for, as we can see, source forest administrator name. And also as well, the password. So we're going to use at this point here, tree research. backslash administrator, and we'll specify the password as well. Now we've done that, just need to select the next button. It's now asking me for the remote MRS proxy server, so I just need to enter that in. And as we can see at this point here, we're using the tray-ex1.trayresearch.net, and then all we need to do is select our next button. And we need to fill out some information in this wizard as well. So I'm going to call this Cindy datum.com will be the target delivery domain. Target database will be mailbox database one. I'm not going to bother with an archive database. Bad item limit, I'm going to go for a maximum of 10. Large item limit, again, maximum of 10. Next thing to do, just select our next button. What we're going to do with our new cross forest mailbox move, start the batch job. We're going to do that as administrator. Selecting the preferred option to start the batch job, we'll do that automatically. And in the case of select the preferred option to complete the batch, We'll just leave this with manual. So at this point here, by clicking the complete this migration batch link on the right pane after the link becomes active. So now that we've done all of that, next thing to do is select new. 
And at this point here, we can see we're currently sitting at syncing. Now this can take quite a while for this to complete. So what we're gonna do at this point here is we're just gonna pause the presentation and return back once the sync is complete. So as we can see, Cindy is now synced across. So because we set it to manually complete our migration, last thing to do is just to complete this migration batch. Are we sure we want to complete the migration batch? The answer being yes. This is going to complete through, and that's the end of this demonstration.